He's the rookie with an endless engine. Oh, playing with his motor revved up tonight. He has a lot of intangibles of work ethic and intensity. His Nigerian upbringing molded him across the globe. I actually enjoyed growing up in Nigeria a lot. It was just a different type of feeling. Growing up at home was very competitive. My siblings. Competition that drove him to stops all across America. I saw something in him because he had like the fire in his eyes. Every time he played, he just plays with the edge. A two back the other way with authority. Just watching him play, you just saw how hard he played. His last stop, Miami's draft board. Put that in his rookie resume. I think he's one of the most underrated and also maybe the most athletic player in the draft. And in his first season, his roots push him forward. I just don't represent myself. I represent my family, the city that I'm from, the whole country. Inside the Heat, Precious Achua. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Inside the Heat. I'm Eric Reed. With the 20th pick in the 2020 draft, the Miami Heat selected the active and athletic rookie, Precious Achua. His journey to Miami has been amazing, with so many stops beginning with a starting point. Precious was born and raised in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, and it wasn't until he made his way to New York in the eighth grade that basketball became a focus for him. I had a recent opportunity to sit down with Precious for a virtual conversation, and he reflected back on his life growing up with his parents and his five other siblings in Nigeria. Let's begin at the beginning for you. What was it like growing up in Port Harcourt, Nigeria? i say it was a very different kind of lifestyle. People are different, cultures are different, people have different um, expectations, and it was just a different type of feeling growing up back there. And, um, you know, going to school, coming back with your friends, playing all day. And I actually enjoy growing up in Nigeria a lot. Precious and his five older siblings were raised by his parents who were Pentecostal ministers. Their devotion to their faith is evident in the beautifully unique names given to each of their children. I didn't know our names were unique until I came to school in the United States. And it was like, what's your name? Precious. I'm like, okay. What's your brother's name? God's gift. And people are like, hold on, what? Is that his nickname or I'm like, no, that's his given name, you know, that's his first name. So no, it just goes down the line from there, promise, grace, peace, God's will and all. I think it's fun, you know, I really embrace it. I like the uniqueness of my name. Precious's first team was his family. He has fond memories of growing up with all of his siblings. Well, I came from a big family. I had a lot of siblings ahead of me that, you know, I watched while I was growing up. I spent a lot of time with them. Growing up at home was um, very competitive, you know, with my siblings, my parents, and ministers. So we went to church on Sundays, and my parents were all about academics, so we're very competitive. We hanged each other growing up, that kind of stuff, you know, just because it was a lot of us, so we made it fun for ourselves was growing up. Basketball is such a huge part of your life now, but it wasn't your first sport. Uh, soccer was. How did your life in soccer begin? Growing up, it was just right there. It was a soccer ball. Me and my friends, right after classes, we'd go we'd come back home, put our, throw our backpacks down, and we'd just run, you know, to go play soccer. It was it was the fun thing to do back then. And it kind of weird playing with the kids because, like, I'm right here, and the kids are like, you know... <laughs> But then my brother already started playing basketball. I pick up a basketball dribble around. First workout with my brother, you know, basketball. I'm just, it's, that, that's been it since then. When it came time for college, Precious's brother, God's Gift, was the first Achua to actually make the move to the U.S. and play college basketball for St. John's University. A few years later, at the age of 13, Precious would join his brother in New York City. And my parents told me then, they're like, hey, just know that you're his mom, you're his dad, you're his uncle, you're his brother. It was a very tough decision to make, mainly on my parents. So my parents didn't want to... Um, let me go at such a young age, um, especially to a whole n another country. They trusted my brother, and I came 
lives with my brother, and I played basketball, you know, went to high school in New York. What was the biggest adjustment for you? I would say the, the biggest adjustment was the cultural shock. You know, just moving to New York, it was just so much, you know, adjustments I had to make to the way people are, the way people act, the, the food, the lifestyle, the weather, you know, just had to make so much adjustment. Through all the changes and adjustments, the bond between Precious and God's gift remains strong. I just watch him grow, guided him, didn't try to control him as much. The most important thing too among all of this is the fact that he really wanted to succeed, made it easier for me to actually stay him, you know, right. He's just been my backbone since then, you know, since I came over and, you know, just guided me through the whole process of, you know, everything, middle school, high school, college, you know, and still now, you know, in the pros. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. Precious Achua's journey to America began when he moved to the New York City area at the age of 13. And that's when basketball really became his primary focus. Precious would attend three different high schools in four years, in the Bronx, New Jersey, and then Florida. And his goal was singular, to play against the best so he could become the best. And we picked up our virtual conversation discussing exactly how those early stops helped him grow and adapt. Let's back it up to your freshman year. You were at Our Savior of Lutheran School in the Bronx, and that's when you really started to focus in on, on just being as good as you could become in basketball. What were your freshman memories from high school? After practice, I stayed back, and you know, I stayed back, and you know, I worked on my game, you know, put up you know, extra amount of shots, and I ended up playing a lot my freshman year, and you know, I started for the team. As a high school freshman, Precious was able to compete and hold his own with his more seasoned teammates. I saw something in him because he had, like, the fire in his eyes. Every time he played, he just plays with an edge. I knew from that alone, I knew that he really wanted it. Basketball is something that I enjoy doing. In the gym, something that I enjoy. It's not like I don't see it as work. Your next step, sophomore year, you transfer to St. Benedict's Prep in New Jersey. What inspired you? What led you to that move, and how did that work out? My freshman year, we played St. Benedict's, and right after the game, I, I believe like two days after, the, the, the coach from St. Benedict's called, and he was like, I want, to, I, I want you to travel to St. Benedict's the same year, so my freshman year. And I'm like, I can't do it. You know, I'm already here. I'm established. I'm going to finish out my, my, my season. Finishing his freshman season at Our Savior Lutheran, a greater calling was on the horizon with St. Benedict's. Towards the end of my freshman year, you know, of high school, I, I developed to a point where I felt like I needed better competition. And St. Benedict's was a, was a school that played out on the national level, played a national schedule. And I wanted to go somewhere where I played against better players in practice every day. And somewhere that I played, you know, a stronger schedule where I played against other schools that are really good as well. And I felt like St. Benedict's was the, was the place for me. In his new territory, Precious would further hone his skill set, spending his sophomore and junior years at St. Benedict's. Precious was locked in. And he had a lot of God-given talent thing that separated him from so many other people. He has such a good work ethic. I always wanted to go against the best. I always want to be in, in the mix of, you know, whoever is said to be the best. And, you know, that was the drive for me. I started seeing a lot of development in my game. And I'm playing against the, the kids that were supposed to be good. And I'm realizing, hey, you know, I grew up against these kids. And a lot of them, I'm better than them. And that's when I say I realized, hey, you know, I have a shot to um, to become a professional basketball player. On the move again and navigating with clear vision, Precious would head to Florida to attend Montverde Academy, an institution that helped shape future NBA stars like Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, D'Angelo Russell, and R.J. Barrett. Montverde was a was a place for me to just really. You know, everything that I've done after years just really focus on that. It's away from home, far away from home. If I, if I could get to a place where I'm able to focus, lock in, you know, and do the things I'm able to do and learn the right way, I'd be able to, you know, I'd give myself a better shot. I'd become, I'd become a pro. And I wanted to be, you know, in a place like that, I'd be able to learn 
and grow and, you know, advance my game, and that was the move for me. While playing his senior year, Precious led Montverde, averaging 14 points and 7 rebounds. He helped his team reach the high school nationals and played in the McDonald's All-American game and was top scorer with 22 points. Precious's development was all coming together. I think he got better of an understanding, the start of an understanding of Embrace being a four or five. He was uh, a good player here. We, we wish we had him for a couple more years. It seems like uh, you weren't afraid of much as a young man coming over to the U.S. Uh, as an eighth grader. So you adapted and evolved to a new country, a new culture, and then three different high schools in four years. Uh, it's, it's pretty clear that Precious Achua has the ability to adapt and evolve and, and feel at home quickly. Absolutely. Um, I feel like that's one of the things that um, has really helped me to um, be successful so far, just you know, being adaptable and just accepting things around me and just finding a way to make them work. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. Precious Achua was a much sought after recruit once he finished his high school career at Montverde Academy in Florida. He ultimately made the decision to attend the University of Memphis to play under head coach Penny Hardaway and assistant coach Mike Miller. We continued our virtual interview discussing how his decision to play at Memphis set him up for his NBA future. What made you choose Memphis? I chose Memphis because of the coaching staff. Coach Penny, Mike Miller at the time, had an NBA facility, the strength and conditioning program was NBA level. Everything was just treated like the pros, and I wanted to be in an environment like that, you know, help me prepare and get me ready for the next level. What did you learn? What did you take from, from their experiences, and, and how did Penny and Mike Miller influence you? And just being around them, and learning from them every day, you know, that, that's, one, that's one of the biggest things I picked up from those guys. Um, great. A very familiar face for Heat Nation, Memphis assistant coach Mike Miller, a part of not one, but two Miami Heat championships. Mike Miller has only one sneaker on. Braun to oh, Miller. No. One shoe, three. Got it! Who needs two shoes? Miller doesn't! And though known in most part for his great years with the Magic, Memphis coach Penny Hardaway did have a stint with the Heat in the 2007 0 Eight season. They worked really, really hard to get what they wanted, and you know, they were good. They were great players in the NBA. But it was Precious's game on the court and his style of play that caught his coach's attention. You just saw how hard he played. Uh, you saw how big he was, how athletic and strong. I felt like if I if I got him at Memphis, that the physicality that he played with and athleticism would be able to take us over the hump. Achua seals inside. Boss showing the hops, can't finish, a two is there. This kid has been a beast on the glass. Precious, you mentioned you came into Memphis with a great recruiting class. A part of that recruiting class was another big fella named James Wiseman, who was supposed to be the starting center, ended up not playing his freshman year, but that opened up uh, an incredible opportunity for you, and you made the most of it. Talk to us about a stellar freshman season for Precious Achua at Memphis. I understood coming in, I mean, we had the number one recruiting class in the country, and I knew people weren't going to let us up the hook. And for me, you know, at that point it was, we're going to produce no matter what, no matter who's here, no matter who's not here, no matter who's hurt, no matter who's out, you know, we're going to get the job done. I saw him go from a guy who came in and could have probably gotten average about 25 a game for us, but coming in and get you 15, 16, 17 some games, but also give you 19 rebounds, five blocks. Just found ways to impact games, winning plays. I felt like I had a chip on my shoulder where, you know, we owed the city, we owed the university, we owed the fans to go out and play hard every day, you know, to do get wins, or I kind of play basketball the right way and help us win games. Blocked by Ajua. Ajua, some kind of play. As a Memphis freshman, Achua averaged a double-double with over 15 points and 10 rebounds a game on his way to winning both Freshman of the Year and Player of the Year in his conference. You were the first Memphis freshman to do that since the 1981-82 season. 
What did the season, what did those accolades and awards mean to you as you look back on it? Achua back the other way with authority! I wasn't actually playing for the accolades. It was just me just playing. You know, I have a lot of passion for the game. And, you know, for me at the point, it was, hey, we got to win game. But now that I look back at it, being able to achieve that with so much going on around, you know, us, around me, around the team, it's just one of the things that I feel like I'll be able to, you know, talk about for, for, for a while. It's not as easy as it sounds to make a decision to leave college after one year. How did you know you were ready, and what went into your decision to applying and, and moving into the NBA draft? So the end of my freshman year, I felt like I was playing like at a really, really high level. And playing the NBA was my ultimate goal. You know, like like I said earlier, my whole high school decision was always playing against the best. You know, when I felt like I was ready for the next level or the place that I'm at at the moment, wasn't um, you know pushing me hard enough or the level of competition wasn't where you know wasn't at its highest. I wanted to go you know up a notch. You know what's next? You know I want to go play against the best of the best and compete every day. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. After an impressive freshman season at the University of Memphis, Precious Achua felt ready to begin his NBA career. But before he would be selected by the Heat in the 2020 NBA draft, he spent some time watching and studying his future team as they played in the Orlando bubble en route to the NBA Finals. Precious and I virtually continued our talk discussing just that. Adebayo drives down the lane and the flush. You already know what I said before. He makes this team go. I watched pretty much every single bubble game. I don't think the Miami Heat upset Milwaukee because I called it. I was with my brother and one of my friends, and right before the series, the, the series started, I said, hey, Miami is going to sweep um, Milwaukee. I said, the most Milwaukee is going to win is 5-1 game. It was crazy. And then Boston, I just kept calling it. We back to the score. The grit the guys played with, it was so much passion. You could tell those guys had love for the game. So a precious prediction in last year's playoffs may have been a premonition. So on draft <laughs> night, you're waiting, you're watching. What do you remember about the moment, the night, uh, the emotions that went with it? With the 20th pick in the 2020 NBA Draft, the Miami Heat select Precious Achua. One of the first things that came to mind was, man, I'm really going to Miami. When it comes to professional franchises, this is, you know, up there with the best. I'm about to go play for an organization that have had a long history of success. I enjoy competing, and I want to be around people that are just like that. This is crazy. I didn't think I was going to be in this position, just being able to be a part of this organization. I can't wait to get to work. Heat Nation, I'm here, ready to get to work. Let's get it. I think he's one of the most underrated and also maybe the most athletic player in the draft. We're just very excited to have him. And I, I think he fits in perfectly with with how we want to play. When Precious got here, I just wanted to make him as comfortable as he can be as far as you know being a rookie and being new to everything, just like I was last year. Two of the first guys you met with Tyler Hero and Jimmy Butler. What were those two early heat experiences like for you? Tyler reached out to me the night after the drive. And when I got out here, we got in the gym together, we worked out. Jimmy texted me, welcomed me, and just told me, you know, get ready um, to get to work. Everybody's in his ear because we want him to be great. We want him to be Bam. You and Bam have been compared a lot. What kind of an example is Bam for you? Um, Bam is a great example, great player. He's a, he's definitely a professional. He knows how to approach his job and get it done. UD want me to be precious, but you know, I call him my little brother for a reason. And I must keep being in his ear, keep building. I've learned a lot from him, just the way he carries himself. He competes every day, and he, he has a passion for winning as well. A precious start to the season for the Miami Heat. The rookie making an instant impact 
He has a lot of qualities, uh, intangibles of work ethic and intensity, competitiveness. Zeller left alone under the basket. What a block by Achua! Achua saves it into Kendrick Nunn. Oh, playing with his motor revved up. He's going to fit in right into our mold of the Miami Heat culture. The Heat fans and the rest of Miami are going to fall in love with him. Just a great kid. Understands what work is. Doesn't take anything for granted. Uh, has an appreciation for everything he has in life. And him and I talk about it all the time. I tell him, I said, remember where we came from? We didn't have it all like this. You know, all we've done is adjust and adjust and adjust. Less than one month into his rookie NBA season, Precious adjusted again when he earned his first two NBA starts and double-doubles in Philadelphia. Achua out battling MB for the rebound. Oh, my. Put that in his rookie resume. Precious Achua gets by MB. Look out below. That's the play of his rookie season so far. My goal out there is not to go get a double-double. My goal out there is to do whatever I can do to help us win the game. I don't know what time it is. We out here, locked in. You were honored in March, named to the Rising Stars 2021 game. And even though the game did not get played, I'm sure that meant something to you to be named to that team. Absolutely. You know, that's one of the things that I've watched growing up. I understand I just don't represent myself. I represent my family, the city that I'm from, a whole country, all the kids back home. Achua, Euro stepping in. That was the honest, like. The way he moves at his size is, is truly, truly special. When he was with us, he was playing shooting guard. He was playing small forward, the four. Sometimes he even put him at the five. So he's somebody who's a very versatile player, and everybody knows he can catch the alley oop. Achua with a right hand jam on the alley oop from Struz. He had to reach back to Biscayne Boulevard for that one. Here comes Andre. Bobbing Precious, yes! What kind of player do you think Precious Achua ultimately will be in the NBA for the Miami Heat? I think Precious Achua will become a player that's a very dynamic player that loves to win, that enjoys winning, and that would do anything, you know, to win basketball games. Precious Achua's work ethic, talent, and willingness to do whatever the team needs him to do to win are all reasons that he fits right into the Miami Heat culture. His extraordinary journey, making a dream a reality, aided by his talent and adaptability, is what has shaped him into the person and player he is today. He's a valuable piece to the future of this young and talented core, and we're all looking forward to watching his growth for many years to come. And thank you for watching this edition of Inside the Heat. I'm Eric Reed.